Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS presenting to you the daily quiz for 20th of May 2022. But before we begin here is an important announcement. We are almost towards the end of the Target Prelims 2022 free crash course series. We will have a session on international relations by Chetan sir at 7.30 pm today and the last session of this series will be tomorrow at 7.30 pm. We've provided the links to these sessions in the description box below. Click on the links and set the reminder to be notified when we go live. This initiative is for all of those who are appearing for prelims 2022. So please do watch these sessions live and make the best use of these sessions. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for many more new initiatives for your UPSC preparation. Now let us begin and take a look at the first question for today. Which of the given statements best describes a virtual private network or VPN? Option A. It is a service that helps internet users to stay private online and provides protection from viruses and malware. Option B. It is a private computer network of an organization in which remote users can transmit encrypted information through the organization's server. Option C. It is a private computer network which allows the users to access a shared pool of content that is not indexed by standard web search engines. Option D. It is a service that helps internet users to stay private online by hiding their internet protocol or IP addresses. What is the context? The government of India has issued a warning to all the virtual private network service providers asking them to adhere to cyber security rules that are released by certain or close their operations in India. And the government is doing this to fight cybercrime. And since this article in the Indian Express newspaper today talks about VPN, we've taken up this question. Firstly, what is VPN? See, VPN is a private network that is virtually created when you surf the web. So every time you switch on your VPN connection, a secure channel is created. And this channel acts as an intermediary between your device and the destination web page. And your data is then sent to the external VPN server which connects you to your destination. So when VPN server does this, your IP address is changed. And that is why websites are not able to accurately track your locations. So this private network promotes online safety and enhances your overall privacy on the web. So, without this VPN connection, websites can see your IP address and also use it to accurately identify your identity as well as your location. But a VPN will prevent everyone from the government to the cyber criminals to track you easily. There are also instances where many countries block access to various websites, which you cannot visit if you are from those countries. But a VPN allows you to bypass such restrictions. But if VPN is enhancing online safety and also overall privacy, why is the government concerned? The government's concern here is about the misuse of this privacy. Free VPN apps may misuse or even sell your data. Also remember that while VPN hides your IP address, it does not provide any protection from viruses and malware. So coming back to our question. Option A becomes incorrect because it does not provide protection from viruses and malware. Option B becomes incorrect because it is not a private computer network. Option C also becomes incorrect for the very same reason. Option D therefore will be the right answer to our question. Moving on to question number 2. Consider the following statements with respect to Kanchenzonga National Park. Number 1. It houses Tholung Monastery, one of the most sacred monasteries of Sikkim. Number 2. The region is sacred to both the Buddhists and the Lepchas. Number 3. It is the only UNESCO mixed world heritage site in Asia. Which of the given statements is or are correct? What is the context? This article in the Hindu newspaper today that talks about the need to increase the number of biosphere reserves in South Asia has a reference to the only UNESCO mixed heritage site in India that is Kanchenzonga Biosphere Reserve which is located in Sikkim and that is why we have taken up this question for discussion. See, the Kanchenzonga National Park forms the core area of Kanchenzonga Biosphere Reserve, which was declared as India's first mixed world heritage site by UNESCO in the year 2016. This property falls within the Himalaya Global Biodiversity Hotspot and it has 18 glaciers including the Zemu Glacier. 
Let us know more about this national park as we discuss the statements. See, the Tholung Monastery, which is one of the most sacred monasteries of Sikkim, is situated inside the Kanchenjunga National Park. So, number one becomes correct. Now, this area is designated a mixed heritage site because it is known for its glacial mountains as well as sacred cultural landscape. This area is sacred as a hidden land to Buddhists, what they refer to as Beyul. And to the Lepchas, it is sacred as they believe that this is Mayel Layang. And what Mayel Layang means is land blessed by God in the Lepcha language. So this here represents a unique example of coexistence and exchange between different religious traditions. So statement number two also becomes correct. Now coming to statement number three. Statement number three becomes incorrect. Why? Because yes, it is the only UNESCO mixed heritage site in India, but not the only one in Asia. Therefore, the right answer to our question would be option A, 1 and 2 only. Now, let us take up question number 3 for today. Which of the given statements is or are incorrect? Number 1. In 2020, the Economic Advisory Council to the Prime Minister set up a beekeeping development committee under the chairmanship of Professor Bibek Debroy. Number 2. The National Beekeeping and Honey Mission was announced by the Union Government as a part of Atmanirbhar Bharat package in 2020. Number 3. The National Beekeeping and Honey Mission being implemented by the National Bee Board is a central sector scheme. What is the context? The Government of India is celebrating World Bee Day today, that is on the 20th of May. It is in this context that we have taken up this question for discussion. See, the United Nations General Assembly declared 20th May as World Bee Day and this was done in order to create awareness on the pivotal role of bees and other pollinators in keeping the people and this entire planet healthy, right? Now coming to National Beekeeping and Honey Mission. This National Beekeeping and Honey Mission under the Atmanirbhar Bharat is implemented through the National Bee Board. This scheme has been launched to achieve the goal of sweet revolution. How? This is by promotion of scientific beekeeping as well as entrepreneurship in this field, infrastructure development for post-harvest management and also by supporting research and development. And this is a central sector scheme which means it is 100% funded by the central government. Now let us take up the first statement. The Economic Advisory Council to the Prime Minister set up a beekeeping development committee under chairmanship of Professor Bibek Debroy. Yes. And this was constituted with the objective of identifying different ways of advancing beekeeping in India. But was it set up in 2020? No. It was set up in the year 2018 and it submitted its report on 26th of June 2019. This committee had suggested various different measures to advance beekeeping in India. So statement number one becomes incorrect. Statement number two is correct. This mission was announced as a part of the Atmanirbhar Bharat package in the year 2020. And statement number three, as we've already discussed, is correct. This scheme is being implemented by the National Bee Board and is a central sector scheme. Therefore, the right answer to our question would be option A, one only. Why? Because the question is asking us for incorrect statements. See, here it is important for you all to remember that National Beekeeping and Honey Mission is aimed at overall development and promotion of scientific beekeeping in India. And this is to achieve the objective of sweet revolution, right? This particular scheme has three mini missions. Number one, where the focus is on production and productivity enhancement of different crops through pollination aided by adopting scientific beekeeping. Mini mission number two has its focus on post-harvest management of beekeeping and beehive products. Mini mission number three has its focus on generation of research and technology for different states, regions and agroclimatic conditions. Now moving on to question number four. Consider the following statements with respect to Competition Commission of India. Number one, it is a statutory body. Number two, it is a quasi-judicial body. Number three, it has suomoto powers to inquire whether an anti-competitive agreement or abuse of dominant position causes or is likely to cause an appreciable adverse effect on competition. Number four, 
the national company law appellate tribunal or nclat hears and disposes of appeals against any direction issued or decision made or order passed by the competition commission of india which of the given statements is or are correct we have taken up this question for discussion because there is a mention of competition commission of india in today's pib article so what is this competition commission of india see cci is a statutory body within the ministry of corporate affairs and this is responsible for enforcing the competition act of 2002 in order to promote competition and also prevent those activities that have an adverse effect on competition in india so statement number 1 is correct it is a statutory body now coming to statement 2 like the national green tribunal the central information commission competition commission of india is a quasi judicial body the cci acts as a quasi judicial body when it is required for it to deliver the orders or directions or also impose penalties why is it quasi judicial because it can adjudicate only on those cases which have adverse effect on competition or promote and sustain competition protect the interests of consumers and also ensure freedom of trade in markets of india so statement number 2 is correct now coming to statement number 3 statement number 3 is also right because it has the power to sue moto or on its own inquire whether an anti competitive agreement or abuse of dominant position can or will have adverse effect on competition in india now coming to statement number 4 see the competition appellate tribunal or compat was established by the central government to hear and dispose of appeals against any directions that were issued or any decisions that were made by cci but in the year 2017 the government replaced compat with nclat or national company law appellate tribunal so now nclat hears all the appeals against orders passed by cci therefore statement number 4 is also correct therefore the right answer to our question is option d 1 2 3 and 4 now let us take up a previous year question from prelims paper 2021 According to the Portuguese writer Nunes the women in Vijayanagara empire were expert in which of the following areas number 1 wrestling number 2 astrology number 3 accounting number 4 soothsaying select the correct answer using the codes given below see for now nunes was a portuguese traveler to the court of vijayanagara king achutaraya and nunes spent 3 years in the kingdom and he gave detailed account of the history of vijayanagara especially the foundation of the city and he mentions that women in the vijayanagara kingdom were experts in wrestling astrology accounting as well as soothsaying therefore the right answer to our question would be option d 1 2 3 and 4 now let us take up the fact of the day for today which is respiratory syncytial virus what is the context according to a new estimate lower respiratory infection which can be attributed to respiratory syncytial virus or rsv was responsible for more than 1 lakh deaths in children under the age of 5 worldwide in the year 2019 So what is this RSV? RSV is the most common cause of acute lower respiratory infection in young children. See this is highly contagious and spreads easily via coughing and sneezing. So what are its symptoms? The symptoms of respiratory syncytial virus are similar to those of a common cold, but it can develop over a few days into high temperature, dry and persistent cough and difficulty in feeding and also wheezing. And in some severe cases, RSV can lead to bronchiolitis, which is an inflammatory infection that can make it hard to breathe. Also, it is the most common viral cause of pneumonia. Here, the air sacs in an infected individual's lungs become inflated due to the deposit of fluid and pus. But now, it is considered a major concern. Why? Number one, because there is no vaccine or specific treatment for RSV. Number two. The experts believe that because of masks and lockdowns many children have been robbed of natural immunity against a range of common viruses and this includes the RSV and majority of the young children that were born in the last 2 years have never been exposed to RSV and therefore they have no immunity against this virus see this is said to be easy to treat but without medical intervention it can become more and more serious 
and coming back to this number here of 1 lakh deaths nearly all the deaths of the 1 lakh reported occurred in low and middle income countries because of high population density poor living conditions and also limited access to healthcare and that is exactly why experts are now calling for a vaccine to be developed as well as prioritized for these vulnerable groups that is all for today thank you for being with us keep watching and keep learning